Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is Kerbal Space Program where my little astronauts, the good old Kerbals, are still working at uh, their uh, tourist um, endeavours. And uh, we got some science last time and used that to get some uh, uh, nice bits of um, items. Some new, a new probe to make our life a little easier um, in many areas. Um, in that area so now we're gonna go for some new possibly we need to start looking at areas which uh, allow us to carry more people at a time in the ship is my next possible um, item um, now we've got a couple of areas a couple of possibilities here um, of ways of doing this that I was thinking of um, one is this hitchhiker storage container. I'd like to have a look to see if that is something which is usable to get four Kerbals on a particular flight at the same time as a possibility. Now, the other area I have seen uh, people do is um, putting multiple modules onto the same orbiter and uh, using that. Um, I don't like the looks of it, but um, it, if it works, then you know I can't really say about it, say much more. Right, so we're going to look at what do we need to do to get some um, money into the company. We are a bit short. We're 174, so we're not too bad. Um, but um, getting so we've been it's been steadily going up um, rather than down since the last episode, um, or so it's lost in the last episode. But there may be a couple we can do just to to get through. So what we got here? Uh, Perform a test. Uh, so this seems to be like a one-way trip. This particular one, uh, but we do get fifty-three thousand for it. Um, so we want to test the Rocco Max decoupler on orbit over Kerbin. So what are the requirements on this? Um, trajectory so they want to test it at between 80 to 96 thousand okay and um, I still got this one here which I was trying to get done which is the swivel at 14 to 15 thousand so okay let's see if we can get it. so let's go and have a look at this Rocco Max coupler whoops I just got rid of one of the, the wrong one didn't I Oh well, never mind. I pressed the X there, cancel contract, instead of going up here to the close. Arsh. Never mind. Okay, let's see if we can find something else then to do. <sighs> right, position a satellite in polar orbit of Kerbin. Oh, I like this one. Because this fits into something I wanted to do, which was um, changing orbits. What else have we got? Um, solid boost it in orbit over Kerbin um, we want to test your test that that sounds like a good one and the radial mount parachute that's a very high height so we won't worry about that one I like this putting a satellite in orbit over Kerbin good money we get 32,000 and 82,000 for completion um, yeah I think this will be the one we're gonna go for let's do a little satellite I wanted to also at the same time have a work on changing our orbit to a polar orbit for a totally different reason um, I wanted to get a polar orbit so that we could um, land on the pole and um, basically do the surveying there by landing there right so um, let's have a look see what this contract requirement is uh, so let's find out a contract right um, no position satellite in the right launch a new unmanned probe that has antenna and can generate power so we need a probe that, that uh, can generate power now we can either do this with the stay put nick which is cheap because we do whatever goes here is going to get lost or we can use we can use the, the probodyne so then we start with that now it needs to generate power uh, now for that we need solar panels which we have here so we put some solar panels on here put them in mirror mode uh, there some solar panels 
and we're gonna need an antenna so where's our antenna so we'll put an antenna on the top on the top this is not coming back so we haven't got to worry about take off the mirror mode is that exactly in the center I'm not sure that got exactly in the center okay and it's gonna need some um, reaction jets etc No, it's only got to be sta stable actually for 10 seconds. Hmm, interesting. Okay, um, we're gonna put this on so that we can see uh, information from it. There we go. Right, now it needs to be able to control itself a little bit in space. So that's your basic um, antenna that can generate electricity and get power from the sun uh, with, the, with the photoelectric cells. Um, what we let's see what else can we do rechargeable battery pack no service bay thermal control system oh interesting didn't know that one was there radiator panel oh, dissipate heating so we can dissipate heat. no why we want to do those at the moment um, but we'll they're possibly for the aircraft right won't worry about bringing this down this is going into an orbit um, anything else that's needed on this lander at the moment? We need a some way of um, that's that Rocco Max, uh, which is a very large coupler, so we can't do that at the same time. So we won't worry about that. Um, where is we've got nothing? Uh, we, our commander control seems to be all missing. Okay, uh, engines, fuel tanks. So what I'm looking for is what we need is a very small cheap jet just to put it into the initial orbit and to hold it in place. So, okay, let's assume that that's enough just to satisfy our requirement. What's the weight of that? Um, 120 kilos. Okay, so that's not, it doesn't require um, very much. So we can try and create a one ton uh, launcher. So we can take our two ton and just reduce it down a little bit. So we're going to take this here and what we're actually going to do is create sub-assembly. Uh, that's, that's a wrong one. So if we go into sub-assemblies and now if I dra drag, if I, let's see, I think I can, come on, drag that, no. And we'll call this probe uh, satellite satellite one so it's just a very simple satellite now okay what we're going to do is load in uh, don't save that we're going to load in our k2 launch level three And we're gonna just get rid of the part, top stuck part of it. So we'll get rid of that. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. And do that. I'm right, gonna put that over there. Get rid of that. And now we're gonna sub assembly put that in there we go come on so it's not selecting it come on don't you just love it when things don't work as you think now I don't seem to have it okay so what we're going to have to do is do this differently then okay we're going to have to reproduce this we'll leave that there Come back here, we're just going to have to put in a something else to act as our control. It just did not want to do that. We'll have to reproduce this. So, okay. That's our starting point. We will, um, okay, so you can't load it in that particular way. 
okay that's that's fine we're finding these things out as we go along uh, that's part of the game a bit of trial and error testing um, okay now I'm just the batteries how battery power I'm gonna go with that we've got enough battery power might not be excellent but we should have enough battery power uh, what else do I need to put on there I needed to put a um, a communicate communicator on the top take off the there so it's got a little communicator on the top and a Kerbal system so we can get the engineering data off of it there we go right so that's our element there now we need to I'm gonna put this onto here and then just have a look see what we've got so that's actually not needed what have we got here and uh, that there did not connect okay that did this up okay so I think that's must be excessive fuel so let's take that we only need we've got a very light system here so we only need that small fuel tank with the terrier I'm thinking just to just to put it so we can change its orbit slightly so we're um, that's 1700 Delta V which is more than enough to um, put that into the required orbit that's the smallest amount of fuel I can give it um, on this and uh, you know, we must be using more than we need to anyway okay so we need about 4400 if we can get I think we only need maybe about 400 milliseconds so we've got plenty of to play with here so if we go here and uh, we might reduce down a fair few things here because we're way overpowered here now what we'll do is we'll take some fuel out of this middle stage maybe let's take out that still overpowered let's uh, take out those stages there um actual fact let's take out the whole of that stage oh we've still got more than enough power um that should be enough to get a satellite into space basically oops yeah that should be enough a single stage rocket we don't need that and we can put this onto the ground because we've only got the one element yeah I think we should be able to do it with that there um, and we're going to call this a um, sat launch whoops didn't go in let's just go in there sat launcher one this um, there we go oh. Sometimes it moves out the window and I just don't know why. Okay, so we've got a nice little small, cheap satellite launcher here. Hopefully it will recover the uh, radial parachute automatically. Uh, this, uh, this section and the engine, that's the, that's the hope. I'm still not convinced that that is actually the case. Let's just check our vessel. Our vessel has a delta V of 4,674 in two stages, which is cool and um which is more than enough i think to put us in a polar orbit um thrust to weight is two, is uh 5.2 in the first stage or sorry 2.06 in the first stage and eight in the second so yeah i think we're basically going to be using mostly that section afterwards once we get it up we're just going to go fairly ballistic and put it into a, a correct orbit okay let's give this a launch just to check the staging quickly so yeah, the stack decoupler is the last part uh, that we put in. Once we're in, in, in our orbit, we just decouple that final stage and then he is on his own. Um, in actual fact, we could get away without that decoupler because, you know, the jet's not really... Oops, let's get this right. Uh, where are we? 
there. It's not needed. I mean, it, sorry, it's not. It, it doesn't need to decouple. That could be left just like that. Um, no need. We might as well leave the jets on there. Uh, for you know, it makes it even lighter that way. And we've even lost a little bit of, of weight and got even better delta V. So we're definitely sure and we can always adjust its uh, uh, trajectory in the future. So this is a, a simple low orbit. We'll see what we can do on this. So we're saving. Um, we'll go for a launch now. Okay, so how are we doing? What are we looking to do here before we start off? Now our normal our normal launches. What we do is we tend to go to the right, i.e. the uh, east, as we take off to put us in a polar orbit. To, sorry, to put us in an equatorial orbit. If I go to the map, to look, so we go to so we're going around this uh, equator area. Uh, what's that there? Uh, oh, that's one of the other places I've got to go to to do a little bit of a, a look at some point. I've got to get build a something to get over that way. Um, so normally we head to go around this equator. Now what we've got to do is do a polar orbit. So what we're going to do is as we take off, we're going to go north um, with our burn to set a, try and set an orbit up in a over the pole. So I'm going to set this immediately like this. So it's side on so that we can try and see if we're getting towards a polar orbit. We might actually, I'm going to go this way because we're possibly going to head a little bit east initially because um, it's the natural way of the turn of the um, um, ship. Now we're use, losing electrical charge here very quickly at this moment so I'm actually thinking maybe we need some batteries so I'm doing a bought this at the moment because looking at that electrical charge it's not going to last. Um, yeah I'm going to put some batteries on this I think yes um, otherwise it's going to get up there even with the um, solar panels if the solar panels aren't in sunlight it's not going to get any power so okay let's abort this cover the vessel and just change that probe just a little bit now, there's two choices I've got I'm thinking of um, one thing is it's got to survive around the dark side of um, uh, no, no, this, this shouldn't. This is a polar orbit. So, what if I just put more solar panels on? Option number two. So, as long as it's got daylight, it should be able to um, get some sort of power on it. So, we'll go for a four. What if we go for a four um, solar panel option? Let's see if that that works. Where are we? solar panel so what we're going to do is go for the solar panels here and slightly one set they're going to tip these up there we go and oops that didn't go as planned they're going to be slightly facing up and these ones are going to be slightly facing down So now, uh, any direction you should get some sort of panel, and even if you're up or down, you should get some sort of of panel on that. Let's see how that looks on the launch pad. Now, we're obviously we're in. I think we're in. Is it coming up for? Let's just see which way the, the sun is. It sunset or sun sunrise? Let's have a look. Have we got a? Uh, over in the west so it's actually sunset okay well let's get this up so are we how's our electrics doing this time even not nothing too much too down too up too down okay that's fine um, I think we're getting enough power right let's get our sp speed up so as I was saying on the um, equatorial uh, we're gonna try to go for a polar launch so we're gonna try and launch straight over and go up um, over the polar straight away 
Um, so we're going to hit set our gravitational drop to go north this time instead of going uh, south. So we're going to try and do our 45 degrees, etc., all based upon this uh, northern um, polar orbit. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go! A little bit of stabilization since we have got it available with this drone. Now, which way around is that going? That's perfect, good. The uh, the uh, land, the, uh, <laughs> the thing is different to what I'd expect, so that's a bit annoying. Um, I should have twisted it around, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Right, we've got here, we've got 4,000, 5,000 meters. We'll go to about our 10% 10, 10 angle. Going a little far, so I'm going to pull our speed down a little bit so that we don't blow anything on the takeoff. 10,000, right, going over to a 45 degree turn. That's too much, 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 too much. Too much, come on, come back, come back, come back, come back. That's it. Just get into orbit again. Obviously a little bit, that was a little bit dodgy. Okay, that's there. Now our apoapsis is 19,000. We're holding well at the moment. It nearly lost control there, a little bit too much turn in one go. I held that down, I should have just tapped it down to that 45 degrees, which is where I was aiming at. Bringing that speed down a little bit as well again. Don't want to get too hot. Don't want to lose the satellite or, or panels or anything off the top. 30,000 feet. Keeping on that our app our axis. Right, we have dropped to that stage. Going with the next stage, which is our most efficient stage. We're in an orbit. So we now have an orbital velocity. So I'm going to cut my engine and we're now going to work with the periapsis so what do we need to do here right we need to get um, slightly um, first of all let's get ourselves into our um, orbit a stable orbit and then we're going to basically adjust the radials now adjusting the radials means um, if I've got it correct uh, you've got two areas you can either adjust the the um, inclinations or the radials and at the moment let's see we're gonna have to go for a prograde burn here so we do aim at our prograde marker now we're gonna add aim a little bit this way because I'm gonna try at the same time to try and bring that back onto the equatorial polar side so we're gonna keep an eye on this so we should see this now extend all the way around then what we'll have to do is aim at a slightly different node so we've got 51 seconds to apoapsis we don't need a fair bit of turn here that's going to be coming down i reckon to there so we're going to wait a little bit longer our height is fine 89,000. as far as requirements for this um Right, we just need to get into the polar around curbing within reasonable deviation. And now I don't know what reasonable deviation means. Okay, so let's start giving this a bit of a burn. Keep on the prograde marker. Just that side of it. You can see that our periapsis is increasing which is cool. Now I need to actually be, I think I went to the wrong side. I need to actually point over there. That's the right way. Right, our periapsis is almost a little bit more. Right, let's just give this over a bit of a shove over this way just to bring it on uh, 
our height has increased a little bit too much now but let's just get that okay we're in a stable orbit which is um, the first stage of this now we need to get these um, items lined up so what we're going to do is at the periapsis is uh, do a slight retrograde to bring our apoapsis height down so uh, remembering to, to adjust at one side you do the maneuver at the opposite side so to adjust uh, our apoapsis we do the work at the periapsis now I'm going to go to see what our, our fuel is not much fuel so ah, right we, we actually going to concentrate on getting ourselves into a polar orbit instead then now uh, let's see that means we need to adjust this at the point of least of, of most change which is actually at the half point halfway point so if I do it change make the change let's just work this through I'm wanting to adjust um, our angle which means effectively aiming towards there which would push this over you can see that that's getting pushed over We've actually run out of fuel. Okay. Reach a designated polar orbit. Now I can't see anywhere where it says what my polar orbit was supposed to be. But uh, maybe uh, maybe that's good enough. Let's see. Um, orbit specification. Apoapsis. Nine. Oh, okay nine million meters okay I totally missed these items so this is an apoapsis of 9390 periapsis of nine meters inclination 90 degrees and where are we where inclination is 81 degrees which is not good our periapsis and apoapsis is way out um, longitude of ascending 354 okay we'll have to have a look at the uh, those bit that bit I, I'm not sure on right okay but okay we we failed at that one we unfortunately lost the chance to do that we ran out of fuel um, I underestimated the amount of fuel is partially because of that large problem also I didn't check just how big an orbit we want and um, now that I see it um, dull we uh, this is the orbit we're after I guess curb and periapsis 9859 uh, this yeah this is the where they want us to go I really should have che checked this so actually this is a very um, large orbit we're after here um, very big um, yeah definitely need more fuel okay we'll be going back to the Space Center and having a go well we've got our own little little um, uh, satellite up there um, not what I expected <laughs> okay so we need a lot more Delta V um, for two things uh, to uh, adjust that uh, satellite once it's in orbit so um, hmm. okay and we're gonna go and have a look at the map again in a second so oops and this time so okay tip number one or thing I've learned number one I'm gonna put more fuel than I need here yeah, we're going to overload this with fuel. Uh, how much? This is now 
two ton of mass so we don't need basically don't need the, the two k the 2k launcher now i think um right if we take out that take out that actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to load the 2k launcher where are we k2 k2 launcher where are you k2 so what i'm going to do here number three yeah load right we know this does um um at a, a good 2k so this sub sub assembly here is good at launching this segment which is that's actually three tons that part of it is um near two tons okay i think it'll be still be fine so this section um Excuse me a second here while I just get this working. I think I need a little bit more of this. Let's say that's going to be our little bit more fuel. Right, that's our K2 launcher. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a sub assembly and then we're going to drag it over here. So we should be able to drag this and put it into there. Now what we can do is call this, okay, this is a Kerbal 2T launcher. So the idea being, uh, description is uh, 2000 kilogram orbit launcher. So we can just pull this in when we need to now so now we can um, we're just going to test this by basically starting with a new um, well we're actually going to load in the satellite um, the satellite save and uh, don't save right, don't save that and we should have the satellite launch one here load now if we get rid of down there and we'll just build the top half first so what did we want to get rid of let's move that over there we want to put a bigger fuel tank on this make sure we've got enough for moving around which now makes us a two point so this is actually going to be a three tons but we're going to use a good portion proportion of this fuel for just putting it into the orbital uh, getting it into orbit and giving it the orbital so now we're gonna so it's actual weight in actual fact we could do it this way instead let's go for this fuel tank that i mean that first fuel tank did not seem to last very long unless i burnt it off thing that's two and a half thousand that's a lot but let's we've got a very big orbit here very long orbit so i'm thinking we might need that amount of delta v that's this could be surprising We'll see how much we need. It's a, I haven't got a calculation to be able to work out how much delta V we would need, but let's go for this. Um, now, if we load up the K2 launcher, there we go. There we go. So there we go. We just added it to that assembly. Right, so this is going to be high orbit. It's going to be a Hi, HO HO one. In other words, high orbit. Now we haven't actually gone up into high orbit with uh, any of our kerbals or anything. So okay, let's now before we go any further, we'll save that. We're going to the launch pad, and I didn't check my staging. Let's check the staging first. Right, so gantry, those, yep, fine. Those, in case. Then finally, uh, this is where there's a problem there and there. Okay, so that and that go together. 
There we go, and then for the final stage. Okay, now if we go to the map and find that requirement, see how big a launch that is required to be? Now we've got two options here to launch this. One is get ourselves in orbit and then try and match that. The other way is wait until our, our um, change the time of day until we are basically level with this um, angle and then we can just do a per polar burn just a little bit before so which is what we must we going to do here I'm gonna time forward and we can see Kerbin is moving around okay so we're now close to being level with that orbit there's a little bit more okay that's must be fine let's see yeah that's gonna be close enough I think yes that's now orbit time so if we now go again a burn straight up let's make sure we've got all our things so yeah we're gonna do a straight northerly burn uh, so that we're as close as we can to that particular axis okay Satellite number two, uh, launch two. Let's go for it. Right, an initial burn north, just so we get a gravity turn, not too much. Stabilization on. And then get up to 10,000, go a little bit further. We're not going to overdo it on the burning on the gravity turn. Okay, first stage liquid is going quite nicely. We're just going to get ourselves into a nice orbit, coming down on the power a little bit, just so that we don't overspeed and burn anything up on the way up. Okay, at the moment we're twisting a little bit, but nothing too dramatic. We're putting 10,000 coming up there. Cool. First stage gone. Speeding up again, going slowly down to the next 20 degrees down. So 20,000 feet. Yep, now going slowly down to the 45 degrees. Hold it on the 45 degree, trying to pull our, our prograde back onto the equator a little bit by going the opposite side to what it seems to be. Yeah. Right, we're at 40, our apoapsis is quite high. Oops, there, that's our orbit is over that side now, so we need to just go over there. We have a 64k orbit. We're going to need to burn a fair bit here. 71, 72, we are now in orbit, which is cool. We're going to continuing on this burn to get, we've got a lot of height to get in here. Now we're going to, I'm actually going to cut off now. It's going to be more efficient now to do this burn once in space, I think. Let's just see how far are we are off. Right, our angle is out a fair bit we need to stabilize that orbit a fair bit before it gets too far out so we will need to burn that that way at the same time as um, going for our orbit burn And I think we've just run out of, uh, out of, no, have we got this? Let's see if we can, yeah, let's go up. We have got control still. We didn't have control without, we didn't have any uh, lateral thrusters on this. We're purely reliant upon the engines. Okay, our orbital marker is on there, let's just see if that's pulled us roughly back, that's 
that's not bad that's not bad okay so now we just need to prograde our stage is almost done oh we're getting some heat problems here injecting that there next stage right so now we are in uh, we're still not in a stable audit so we're gonna go down here go for straight for there we're still gaining height because we've got to get onto a big orbit here Okay, we're, we're orbital, let's just get a little bit more. Okay, we're actually orbital. Now we can, so we're not gonna go back into the, the ground, so we can see how far away we are from our requirement orbit. So first of all, we need to get our apoapsis, um, or we can bring up the periapsis up to meet this. So what we're gonna do is do that at the apoapsis. So what we're going to do, uh, so as, as always, you adjust one side by doing it at its the opposite. So what we're going to try and do is get our periapsis up to and as close to this figure here as we can. Uh, and we'll see if we've got enough fuel on board to do that. So let's just get ourselves up to our apoapsis. minutes to go oh nearly went past 23 seconds okay so what we need to do is start moving towards our prograde marker we're on a good generally on a good here right I'm gonna start the burn I want to bring up this list again right, let's go here and you should see our periapsis swap over and our apoapsis increasing little over little over little over and how's our angle right so we've got to change that inclination just a tad you can see that it's just not quite on the line so that means we can do that with a very small burn towards the anti-normal I think on here should be okay so if I go it's not having the effect I would expect on that there is that plugging that equal let's just see which way we are facing here well, our inclination is is not quite no, I need to go the other way then. We need to get our inclination onto a 90 degrees. Right. 
So I'm using the, on the right hand side, we've got an, our inclination value. So it's going down. Oh, that's as close, that's, that's, that's as close as I can get, I think, uh, within a reasonable deviation. So now um, we've got to extend so our angles a little up there but our, so our apoapsis we're now going to angle out our periapsis and then then we do it's got minor corrections just to get this exact uh, within their their required deviation but uh, so now we're going to get over to the apoapsis so that we can make the big changes on the periapsis so following that basic rule you to make changes on one side you make changes whoops i've just something's just blown up i just blew up um Okay. Um. Hmm. Why was that? Okay. Let's see. Lift off. Separation of stage three. Fuel tank was damaged by exhaust from liquid engine. Boom. Explode due to overheating. Oh. Okay. So we are overheating. Out here. Um. Okay, that is something I was not aware of, that we are overheating whilst out in space at these lights. So why did they overheat? We didn't have any energy going. Were we putting too much um, heat into it? Um, okay, I'm going to go and have a, a check on this. Interesting. So we failed at that. So let's just go down to our tracking station. I'm not using reverts, I'm not using quick saves. You could say, oh, I'm just going to go back to the launch and give that another go. No, part of career is you, we've made a mistake. I now have to work out what went wrong on trying to um, get out there. Why did it overheat? It must have been the sun overheated it. Um, it's the only thing I can think of. For whatever reason, we did um, our, our drone overheated when I was doing that time warp. Um, or was it due to the time warp? Um, hmm, interesting. Now I'm going to terminate some of these ones because let's see if I can cover that. I'm going to recover some of these um, items if they're recoverable. Thank you. Um, can't recover. Can't recover those. And we have a we have a satellite. We have a satellite. Our own satellite in orbit with a communications relay. Uh, just no fuel and no way of actually doing anything from where it is now. I think we've run out of fuel as well. But okay, um, let's go back to our um, launch pad. So I will now go and find out why did my satellite um, overheat in space. Now maybe we need to put some uh, cooling panels on it, those radiators. We saw those and I wondered well, what are those radiators for and what are they, what do we need those for? I may have just found out um, why that was. Possibly something like the solar panels or some other part of that sh ship exploded in deep space. Um, were we going too fast? I don't think so. We were heading on a good trajectory there's no atmosphere out there so there's no such thing as fast we must have overheated as simple as that um so interesting unless there's something i did wrong i'll have a look at back through the video and see um what i may have done wrong but until next time have fun